G'day everyone, welcome to the channel, or welcome back if you're a subscriber. We haven't done a review on a printer for quite a while. Flashforge have sent us one, so let's unbox it. Boom! That's how I like to unbox printers. Now let's get into some details. Right, some details. Flashforge were kind enough to send us this printer for review. Now, in full disclosure, they sent it at no charge. And they did give us a couple of affiliate links, which you'll find in the description. But all the opinions expressed are my own. The Flashforge Adventure Adventurer 5M Pro. Now, the Pro means basically a fully enclosed printer. Uh, that means it'll print all filaments and I've tried several filaments which you'll see later on when I show you the models that I've printed. It has a build volume of 220 by 220 by 220 which is unusual but I think you'll find that it's not all that limiting and when you consider the price of the machine and what it can do I think you'll find that it's plenty big enough to do what you need. It prints beautifully. As I said, it prints PLA, ABS, ASA, carbon fibre, you name it, it will print it. It has two nozzles that come standard with it. There's a 0.4 and a 0.6. The 0.6 is a hardened steel nozzle, whereas the 0.4 is just a steel nozzle. So you can print with the 0.6 any filament you like and not have to worry too much about wear. The changing of the um, hot end or the nozzle is straightforward and probably the easiest one I've come across. You simply push in the side tabs and it just pops straight out and the reverse is also true when you put the new one in just pop it up into the little hole until it clicks and it's done. There's no further recalibrations or anything required. It just continues on merrily on its way. The front cover, the front cover of the print head is magnetic. So you just lift that up out of the way and you can access the nozzle. Very, very good. The filament change or filament load is a little bit different to some other printers that I've used. Um, but that doesn't mean it's any better or worse. I actually quite like it. It's very well explained in the menus and uh, it works faultlessly. I haven't had any problems with blockages or jams or anything like that. even though the printer has a rear mounted spool holder, which is, I don't know, when are they gonna learn? So I found a, uh, a model of a side mounted spool holder and I did a remix of it and uh, printed that out and it works really, really well while on the side, which is, I'll show you some photos of it, but that just sits on the side like so and your filament goes in through the feeder tube no problem I really like it now as far as setup is concerned the setup the original setup or the first setup runs very smoothly it goes through the uh, bed leveling and the input shaping and takes you right through to loading filament and then prints a little test model which I didn't uh, do successfully because it came unstuck from the bed. Speaking of which, the instructions tell you to use glue on the print bed which heats to 120 for memory. I haven't used glue on it at all uh, but as long as you clean it very well 
And for most filaments, that means a quick wipe down with alcohol, or if you're using um, ABS, a quick wipe with acetone. And I haven't had any models come unstuck since. So yeah, if you don't like glue like me, then you can do without it. Right, what else can I tell you about it? The, the menu screen up here is very, very intuitive. It has everything you need to work the printer. It even has pictures of how to load, how to change the filament, things like that. Uh, if you go into, now this is something that it didn't do on the initial setup, is set up the Wi-Fi. But if you go into the Wi-Fi setting, you can set that up and it works really, really well. I've been able to print from my laptop wirelessly through to the printer, no worries at all. The slicer that comes with the printer on a uh, uh. USB stick, is the flash print 5 now you can use that if you want and you can have full control of the printer with that and you can also use the inbuilt camera to monitor your prints but it almost recommends that you use orca slicer which is a much better slicer in my opinion you can set it up in with the normal methods of finding it's on the list of printers to install. You can install it onto a, and you can send files wirelessly, start prints, uh, control the machine, anything you want. Except I couldn't get the camera monitoring to work on. It did on the, the uh, flash print, but not on. So if you're into that sort of thing, yeah, something to consider. But using Fantastic. I have no problems whatsoever downloading files. Whatsoever. Have no problem downloading files and they printed really nicely. I really have no complaints with this printer. It prints fantastically well. The detail is really, really good. And I'm showing you some B roll of the prints that I've done at the moment.
All right, what else can I tell you about it? It's got a removable magnetic bed, a nice door, removable print surface. It has a secondary cooling fan for your PLAs and such. It has inbuilt filtration. This has two filtration systems. One is an internal one where it just filters the internal air and one is an external which pumps the gases out through a filter and out into your room. I found that it works quite well. The ABS was almost unnoticeable. What else can I tell you? It um, just works. As a, as a beginner printer, as a, uh, as a print farm user, it, it just performs beautifully. I cannot fault it. I have other printers in this sort of category and it's, it's at least as good as any other printer I have uh, and in some cases probably better. So I'm, I'm very happy with the printer. As I said in the outset there, there are affiliate links in the description. Um, it helps the channel, but use them or not, it's up to you. I think this printer is well worth looking at as a purchase and I highly recommend it. Any faults? Yeah, maybe one. It has two switches to turn the printer on. It has one round the back and it has one on the front. So if you want to turn it on remotely, you can't. You've got to be standing there. Now to me that's not a problem because I always print watching the first layer and watching the print during while it prints just to make sure everything is running fine. I don't rely on the camera and uh, so it doesn't bother me, but to others it might. Okay, very happy with it. Please like and subscribe. The channel is or has been dormant for quite a while and we're trying to get it back up to speed. There will be more reviews. There will also be the um, filament testing that I uh, spoke about in a previous video. Uh, that'll be a tensile test on, I think there's something like 17 different filaments, but that's coming up. All right, I'll catch you on the next one. Please like and subscribe, as I said. Bye for now.